Hey everybody, this is Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another discontinued knife. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Kershaw Tirade 1850. Now, this knife is no longer in production by Kershaw. Uh, this knife is incredibly unique in the sense that it is a composite blade. And I'm going to get in that in a minute, but before I get into that... Let's do some size comparisons. So first off, let's compare it to an actual ZT, my brand new Zero Tolerance 0562 Carbon Fiber that I got from Brick from Blades We Love on eBay. You need to check that guy out. And how about the Spiderco Advocate? Let's put these side by side. As you can see, it's a very, very big knife, uh, even lengthwise. Even though the blade length is uh, 3.5 inches, because the knife handle is so gigantic, uh, it seems like it's a much larger knife than it is. But actually, the blade lengths are exactly the same size. You can see if I put, put the 0562 up against the 1850 tirade, you'll see that there are, the blades are almost similar, but they're, they're definitely uh, 3.5 inches. And put it up against one more, the ZT-0-0456 uh, Black Wash. So it's a big knife. It has a medium size and very large. So it's obviously it's a big knife. And the reason I, I got this knife was because I had no idea at the time that I was collecting these pieces that Kershaw even made a composite blade like this. Now, the top part of the knife... Uh, is a middle-of-the-road steel, really very good steel. Uh, CP is a 154CM, uh, not to be confused with CPM154, which I believe is a different steel. Uh, this is a 154CPM, uh, C CM, and the bottom is made of CPMD2, as you can see that. Now, what's interesting is that the top part of the knife is actually stainless, uh, it's got stainless properties, and the bottom part doesn't have stainless properties. It's a D2, D2 steel. Um, but it is a really beautifully big, gigantic knife. Just take a look at the titanium handle on this. Look at the frame lock. Have you ever seen a frame lock this thick? I haven't. I haven't even seen a frame lock this thick on, let's say, even the 350s that Ken Onion made. This is a Ken Onion design knife, by the way, as you can see. Need to go over that. There it is right there, CPM, C, uh, 154 CM on top, CPM D2 down at the bottom, made in the USA, designed Kershaw by Ken Onion, no longer with Kershaw. He now works for CRKT. And look at that gigantic frame lock. So big. It's got a full uh, full backspacer, which I love. I love knives that either have completely open construction, which is standoffs, or a full backspacer. I'm not into that half backspacer thing that you see on a lot of knives. Uh, but, I, you know, but I... I for certain knives, I, I deal with it, like the Spyderco Swish Bowie, for example, which has that half on it. Really interesting and unique piece. The whole entire knife looks like a big, gigantic metal chocolate cake with the icing dripping down it. I love that inlay. That is carbon fiber inlay on both sides. I'm not, I'm not, I think it's carbon fiber. It could be G10, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's carbon fiber uh, inlay on it. Yep, let's take a look at the stats since we're doing that. As you can see, I printed these stats out um, on Knife Center, and it is... Uh, carbon fiber inlays on the front and the back. Something you don't really see too much on Kershaw knives, but back in 2007, before ZT, Kershaw was trying everything, and they wanted to see if they could make a high-quality knife, and that's what this says, folks. So, uh, so let's go ahead and do the stats. It's a spring-assisted knife uh, infused with, once again, CPM 154CM steel and D2 down at the bottom. Uh, carbon fiber inlays, really big nitro, uh, carbon nitro uh, coating on the uh, on the blade itself. Uh, removable pocket clip, and 
It weighs at 6.7 ounces. The blade of 3.58 inches. So there you have it. Really beautiful knife. One of the, the ergos on the knife are incredible. Uh, again, uh, your hand kind of fits these grooves very nicely. There are no hot spots on it. Pocket clip does not hit my hand at all. There's the jimping is down here, which seems kind of weird because if you want if you're like me and you use knives, you like to choke up a little bit. There should be. I always felt maybe they should have moved the jimping up here as well, but it's fine down here on the handle. Um, and of course, it's, they also have some jimping down underneath the finger choil there. So very, very comfortable piece. Also pretty comfortable in reverse grip. Uh, feels fantastic. It's just a beautiful, gigantic metal, as I said, metal chocolate cake. I love this piece. It's never leaving my collection. Pocket clip is nice and tight on that. Um, also one of the first knives I've ever seen Kershaw make where the relief cut is on the outside of the knife. Usually you'll see that relief cut on the inside of the knife. But I think there's, I'm not sure if they're doing away with that, um, putting it on the inside. But they're starting, I'm seeing, starting to see a lot more knives with the relief cut on the outside of the knife now. So that's kind of new. And that's actually pretty odd to see on a piece, I think, in, that came out in 2007. So there you have it, the Kershaw Tirade 1850. If you're going to be collecting, definitely, and you're going to be collecting Kershaws, discontinued Kershaws, definitely try and get your hands on a piece like this. Uh, like I said, I got mine two years ago for $185. Um, I'm not even sure. I think the MSRP for this knife at the time, I'm guessing, is anywhere between $100 and uh nine ninety nine to maybe one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine MSRP back in two thousand seven. Now this knife, as I said, because it's a collectible piece, it goes upwards from three hundred and twenty five dollars, brand new in a box with everything in there, uh, to roughly about five hundred now because it's a collectible piece, and these things are much more rare. Uh, they did release the piece uh, also in two other versions. G10 Black and G10 Orange, and I believe there's also a G10 Light Tan version of this knife, but this is the original, and I had to have the original, so there you have it, the Kershaw Tirade 1850. Uh, any thoughts, comments, or questions? I would like to say, however, one last comment. This, it's a spring-assisted knife, but in my opinion, the spring-assist, it's actually kind of sluggish because the knife is so big. Um, it actually doesn't have... Uh, a knife this size probably should have two torsion bars in it instead of one, and actually it only has one. And in uh, my opinion, uh, spring-assisted knives should be smaller and not so heavy. Uh, I think a piece like this would have been benefited if it had KBT ball bearing system in it. But anyway, this is the piece that they made, and this knife has now made history, Kershaw history. So any comments or questions? Uh, if, again, Knife Shark here. If you like what I, if you like what you see and you like what I do, please leave your comments and questions below. Uh, please hit like, share, and subscribe. I really want to hear from you on any of my videos. I am missing comments. I know my stuff isn't uh, as flashy as other guys' videos, but I'll be working on that. Uh, in the meantime, this is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off, hoping once again that you will find happiness in your next piece of sharp art. Omar signing off.